Hello, and welcome to another interesting talk when we're going to discover on how to leverage the help of a partner to have a successful migration from the legacy system to Odoo. I am Josiad Germanard, head of product communications, and I am accompanied today by one of my dear friends, Chinton Shaw, who is the founder and CEO of BrainVire. Welcome, Chinton. Thank you, Yoshi. Thank you for having me on this talk. I am Chintan Shah, owner and founder of company Brainwire Infotech INC. We focus on digital transformation and we help companies to do digital strategy implementation. Udu has been one of the forefront partnership that we have for the last five years. And we are proud to be associated with Udu, which has been one of the leading platform for a digital transformation for any of the organization for their entire ERP implementation. But at Brainwire, we are 1500 resources. We are spread across 11 countries and 20 global offices. Retail, healthcare, manufacturing, distribution, ad tech is some of the core verticals that we focus on. And we have Mr. Mohammed with us on this talk from Gafco, which is a Gulf L filtering company based out of Saudi. And they had some interesting journey that they were looking at to doing a digital transformation for the B2B and a B2C business. And Udu has been uh, successfully able to do that. So thank you, Mohammed, to join this talk. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, Chintan. Mohammed, welcome uh, to being here today and to go over your journey. And uh, please let us know a little bit more about what Gafco does. Yeah, so my name is Mohammed Asarwa. I'm the general manager of Gafco. Um, our company specializes in air filtration solutions, and we sell our filters across uh, multiple continents and in over 50 countries, and we've been supplying our solutions since 1990, and we've expanded our product range from seven products up to 220, and that includes filters, air filtration systems, as well as clean room solutions, turnkey clean rooms um, we build from scratch. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I can't help but notice air filtration is a booming business now uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, how has your business, can you tell me a little bit about that? Have you experienced tremendous growth in the recent year due to the pandemic? I feel like you're in a very specific and special place right now in the market. Yes, we are. Um, it was a challenging time for us and for everyone else. Um, we bring three decades of expertise supplying next generation air filtration solutions. We, we try to work every day towards redefining air filtration technology. So mm. basically, wherever air quality is a problem, we most probably have a solution for it. Wow. Okay. So I'm so excited to be talking to you today because the purpose of this talk is to understand change, right? And, and, and going from legacy systems into a digital transformation strategy with the help of, of BrainVire in this case. Can you tell us a little bit more, Mohammed, on what the system looked like prior to inter being introduced to BrainVire? Give us some background as to your workflows, how you managed your business, and some of the challenges that you were facing. Yeah, so actually, as the company scaled and grew, um, we had a lot of gaps in communication between departments. We suffered in coordinating with other uh, stakeholders, whether be them vendors or suppliers, or customers. And basically, what we, we, what we realized very early that we had to, to implement a change, and that change needed to happen in the technological foundation. And so we started looking again into ERP systems, uh, we've been using SAP Business One. Uh, the platform has served over five to six years now, and it's been a good system for that period. But the business has changed a lot, and we want to implement business best, best practices today. And so we needed better equipment, better tools, and certainly better foundation to build upon. Now, you mentioned that the company has changed from the moment that you adopted um, SAP. What were those specific changes that inspired you to seek uh, a different solution? Yeah, so um, we, we think of our business as an information transferring process. So we have people on fields and on the sites, 
they find needs, they transfer that information to sales departments, and then that information flows to operations and then production, manufacturing process happens, and then it goes back to logistics, warehouse, and then delivery drivers. So we were trying to find ways to first improve that process, make it more efficient, um, eliminate distortion of information across that chain, and eventually provide our customers with a better experience, um, earning the badge of you know being a company that's easy to work with and do business with. So basically that was the moment we found that it's time for us to um, go to the next phase we needed to scale and the current systems were just incapable of you know, providing that the level of function we needed to carry on day-to-day -day business operations in a more efficient manner. Mm. I feel like these are similar challenges that many different companies face yeah. um, across, across so many different sectors. Uh, Chintan, you have experience with such a wider range of industries uh, and, and, and very specific needs. When you met with GAFCO, what were some of the things that you've uncovered that BrainWire has said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and, and take care of this? In other words, what has, uh, what has BrainWire identified to help GAFCO with their digital transformation? Definitely. So I think one of the main focus was a communication and the data flow and making sure that the data flow between the different departments has to be in a single unified system. That was one of the key requirement. Mm -hmm. Second, which Mr. Mohammed was mentioning was that to make sure that the company has to be easy to work with from a customer point of view, internal team point of view, and the entire communication point of view. And then during this COVID, the digital transformation becomes such a key important thing that certain people are working from home, certain people working from remote location, certain people are working at the facility or manufacturing facility. You still want to make sure that there has to be less number of emails and it has to be more collaboration tools. And that is where I think when we compared the current platform, so first was the more of analysis to understand the current platform and which was the SAP B1. And it was a big foot to get into, right? I mean, when we looked at it, so we wanted mm -hmm. to understand what are the pain points, what are the challenges? And when we looked at it, there was no doubts in our mind that Udu can be a perfect fit because of the Udu open architecture, at the same time, modular based approach. And that was mm -hmm. something which was very perfect and easy. Third, and the most important was the ease of use. And that was very mm -hmm. important that the people at a manufacturing facility, people at the customer success story, or people who are like, you know, dealing into accounting, they, all of them will be using the system at the same time, they need to have the same information available with all the details. And that's where I think the Udu played a vital role. We able to demonstrate all those challenges, which was Gafco was facing. And one of the key highlight was the vision of uh, the management team from Gafco, right? I mean, right from the Mr. Muhammad, his vision to take this company to the digital transformation, making sure that the B2B and a B2C business both has to go through the platform and the single source of technology truth. And that's where I think be able to demonstrate and like, you know, that discussion started further and then ultimately the entire selection process happened. And then the Udu and BrainWire came as a winner from that to make sure that it can solve the problem, what was required. And that's where I think the exciting journey started with Gafco. That's wonderful. And it's, again, another testament to your methodology at BrainVire to be able to execute and deliver on these specific needs. In this case, Gasco had a disconnect between the sales section or the sales part of the business with manufacturing. And so having that connection across the board is critical, not only for growth, but also for efficiency. Uh, would you agree? I agree. hundred percent. All right. So. Let's go back to understanding this journey. GAFCO decided after the exploration phase to address the challenges that they were facing. They went with BrainVire to execute this transformation. Mohammed, can you tell us a little bit of what the change management process was like at GAFCO? I feel that change management is a topic that doesn't get enough attention. We know that projects on many occasions fail 
because of improper uh, change management techniques. So I'm really curious to get your input as to what went well and what were some of the strategies that you worked with Chinton around to, to secure and to assure a positive and successful implementation and migration of one system to the next? So management realized that change is binding, and, but we had to sell the idea to people um, for it to be a successful uh, transition. And mm -hmm. we spoke to them and we touched on their pains. Um, and at that point, people realized that how much they've been suffering to execute their day-to-day -day tasks and what solutions are existing in the market that could make their job much, e much easier. And mm -hmm. they would carry on their daily activities with much more efficiency and less fatigue and um, better coordination uh, across departments uh, from the moment we head to the customer up to the moment we deliver our product. And uh, so basically we, we, um, um, we, we provided a solution that is uh, uh, split into two parts. So we have a front end and a back end. Mm -hmm. And we, we worked with BrainVire to kind of propose a, uh, a partnership between two organizations and two different platforms where they could sync all of the information we need and put it for the customer on the website. And currently, I mean, up, up to now, we, when, we, when a customer raise a, raises a query to the sales department, they have to communicate that back all the way to production or, 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 um, or uh, logistics. And we go through several layers uh, and many times uh, there are delays and information usually would, would, uh, would uh, arrive distorted uh, mm -hmm. in many cases. And so what we did is that we thought about improving the entire process from A to Z and putting the information that already exists in our system for the customer on the front end. So they would find the information anytime, anywhere, real, uh, real time. And um, um, the, 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 the change was led by me. And uh, mm -hmm. I believed in, uh, in uh, the transformation was, was vital for us uh, to, su to survive, to remain competitive and um, sustain our growth. I mean, it's, it sounds like an incredible decision to make. Obviously, it's not easy, but you touched on something that's very important, Mohammed, and that is getting the buy-in from your employees. I think yeah. it's a brilliant strategy to highlight the inefficiencies and the problems that the company is currently having with the, with the stakeholders in order to get the buy-in to have a better system. I think that is an incredible strategy. I think it's one that works. Obviously having BrainVire as a partner to help execute that is the reason why we're here today. So just to reiterate, change management is something that every company has to deal with when considering adopting a new system and working with a partner is definitely the way to go to execute that effectively. Um, I know that we all have to get uh, finance on board and accounting on board. Mohammed, can you tell us a little bit of how you were able to win the accounting department to adopt the new system? Um, yeah, so um, basically we, uh, we ask accounting and many other departments uh, to project what would be their ideal process. Not now, but mm. let's say in the future, five to 10 years from now. And um, everyone was uh, writing down their requirements, what they wanted, and almost to the point where we asked them, if you don't do anything, it's fine. If you can automate every process, it's fine. If you can just control that process and manage it, it's fine with us. Just write down all of your needs. And um, we did not really face much of a, a resistance from uh, mm -hmm. accounting. Uh, but more so production, because um, mm -hmm. there are many complications. We have 220 products, um, 38 production lines, and wow. yeah, 8,000 SKUs, and transferring all of this information from one system to another is a major, is a major challenge, um, um, especially considering that the existing system uh, has many of the data either corrupted or not mm -hmm. properly syncing with what Udu's requirements were. So we had mm -hmm. to work around all of that, but people were eager to push forward just because they knew what would come 
would save them a lot of time and resources. And so we all bought on the idea. That's wonderful. And I think that's, I, that is the biggest takeaway here is that we need to have cons- consensus and true buy-in to be able to move tr- and transition effectively. Uh, thank you for the, that, that tip. And since we're on the, uh, on the topic of tips and best practices, Mohammed, can you tell us, we're here with a global community, what would be some takeaways or some best practices that you could share with other leadership uh, and, and uh, CEOs perhaps? Sure. So um, I, I cannot stress this enough. You need to find the right partners. And um, the case for and, uh, Brain Wire deserve, deserve, uh, deserves these compliments. Um, the guys had the expertise, the skill, the capacity. I was very concerned with, um, with finding a partner that would outsource a bulk of the project. And then, mm. you know, when, when you do ERP implementations, you, you, uh, there are a lot of risks associated with it if right. you don't find the right partners. And you're putting all of your eggs in their hands. And, and um, the thing about Reinvire is that they're very consistent. They've had customers for a very long time. They're still serving them. That tells us a lot about their reliability. And they're handling the entire project from A to Z. The project is so big, we, we had to split it over phases just because we lacked the capacity to fulfill every uh, Brainwire requirement, uh, you know, across um, multiple divisions. So we, 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 uh, we're, we're, we're implementing phase one at the moment, but we have phase two and three and probably phase four. And I think digital transformation would be a continuous uh, process. Wow, thank you so much, Mohammed. So remember, having the buy-in from everybody as well as choosing the right partner are some big takeaways from this talk. Chintan, what's in the future? If you can briefly tell us uh, what some of these projects coming up down the pipeline look like with Gapco? Sure, definitely. I mean, so, I mean, first of all, when we implement any platform, we as a partner always has to think what is there for the customer? What is the return on investment, which is the most important thing, that what is the objective they want to achieve and how to make sure that there's enough return on investment from any platform point of view. So that is something that we are core focus and that was the plan for the phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. So phase two and phase three is going to be more of automation of some of their current processes, which are still manual or still there is some level of inputs are required from the team. So automation of those processes, data collection, analyzing those data, and then some of the AI and ML from uh, artificial intelligence and the machine learning to do some of the automation of the processes, responses, and some of the information, which is going to be like, you know, some of the key requirement or the key implementation plan for the GAFCO for the phase two, three, four. Wonderful. Well, gentlemen, unfortunately we are out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for being us today. Mohammed, thank you for sharing your story and letting us know what is important to consider when doing a, when transitioning, when, when moving from one system to the next. Naturally, Tintin, thank you again for being with us. Uh, Brainwire has always been a, a true and long friend with Odu, and I wish you both continued success. I'd like to take this opportunity to open the floor up to questions to learn more about how a digital transformation can be possible for your company. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Well, you know, I just finished asking a lot of questions, but let's keep this party going by including the audience to ask their questions and learn more about uh, Gafco's success story and Brainvire. Let's get straight to it. Uh, first comes from Sammy. Sammy asks, "What are what were the main problems with SAP?" Business one, uh, Mohammed, can you tell us a little bit about what the challenges were? Did employees not know how to use it? Was it configured wrongly? Give us a little bit more context there of the of the challenges with with uh, that solution. Yeah, so um, SAP Business One was a pretty good software for that time, and what we really suffered from is the lack of aftermarket support. That's one thing. The second thing is 
um, the extensions. So when you go to the Udo's marketplace, you find a very big range of extensions and they almost address every business problem. And that this element makes us able to develop Udo further and further customize it to our needs and our changing needs. So yeah, that's one very important element of, of why we shifted from SAP to Udo's because of that support. Got it. Okay. Now, when it comes to Odoo and Odoo ERP, Chinton, would you say it's suitable for an HVAC business? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, I mean, Sami's question about the SAP B1 versus Odoo, I mean, just to highlight on a very glimpse level, sure. when you looked at the mid-segment ERP, Odoo comes at a way above, according to the many of the Gartner and Forrester studies and indirect study from many businesses. So the way in which the digital journey is happening with all the customers and the way in which the COVID situation has asked customers to move to those digital journey with the cloud and web offering, that is where I think that Udu scores much above the any other ERP software. And that is how the Udu was able to win. And when we talked about Udu from uh, HVAC and the manufacturing point of view, yes, I mean, Udu has some great tools from manufacturing, but at the same time, it is important that after service, as Mr. Muhammad was mentioning, that once you sell your product, you need to maintain the warranty, support, after service. At that point of time, you exactly need to know what you sold, what was the component, whether it was covered by third party, you were covering, and how to handle those situations. And then if you have a single platform to do, rather than two, three platform, it become easy. Right. So again, like, you know, everything integrated in a component-based module, is the key aspect and then you have all the data in the single platform and analytics on top of that i think that is what makes udu as a winner wonderful um on the same topic of odu and um you know the strengths of the of the platform bradley asks uh he's facing challenges in catering omni-channel experience through shopify can integrating odu help so, I mean, yes, uh, Shopify as a platform has a certain limitation, mm -hmm. but definitely with Udo and Shopify, omni-channel experience is definitely possible. Uh, of course, it will be with some limitations, like, you know, for example, if you go with the Udo commerce, then that omni-channel experience can expand to multifold it. If you go with uh, WooCommerce, it can multifold. If you go with Adobe, it can have all the features. However, at the same time, from a Shopify point of view, of course, customer, inventory, product, loyalty, and some of the marketplace integration. So yes, and then if you are using Shopify, even the POS of Udo can be integrated to same level. So yes, omni-channel experience will be possible. I will say that you can have maybe around 70% of the omni-channel experience using Udo and Shopify or 60%. However, if you use Udo with Udo Commerce with uh, Udo, maybe that experience will go up to 90 or 95%. We have uh, many examples where we have done Shopify and Udo. It's available on our website. And if Bradley wants to go on one-on-one, -on -one, maybe my team will be happy to answer that. And that's great. And that's exactly what Odoo does. Um, just to follow up with the question that Robert asks, uh, typical challenge, multiple different uh, softwares to cater to the various business needs. The question is, is there a way for Odoo to provide all of the services through a single platform? Yes, Robert, that is exactly what we do. Uh, Brainwire is an expert in digital transformation using the power of an all-in-one single platform to address all of these various needs. So that's you know exactly our bread and butter. I would think that, Chinton, you would agree, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, Yoshi, you are correct on that. And just to add a couple of software name, I mean, do you use Service Desk or the ServiceNow or Zendex for your ticketing system? You use like, you know, separate CRM system. You use separate uh, data warehousing system. And then maybe you use something else for the accounting. And that is where when you are end up in five different system. And when you look at Udo, sales, purchase, account, inventory, finance, service, warranty, appointment management, and maybe a chat. Everything can be done in a single platform, including the internal message board, which is very important. That internal team communication within the different department and which Gafco use it at a maximum level, that to communicate within those department. 
and internal communication rather than avoiding the emails and yes i mean so it's right. a great yeah, exactly i mean that, that's that's the beauty of having an all-in-one system um last question here from hannah uh, hanan gs1 barcode does gs1 barcode support in odoo 13 or is it possible for odoo 13. so yes i mean this is a little bit more technical than definitely what i could have anticipated but yes i mean uh, barcode integrations is possible in odoo 13 and odoo 14 and i'm sure now odoo 15 is just around the corner so which is like you know the news is coming and we all are waiting for that but yes, I mean, in Udo 13 and 14, barcodes are possible. There is multiple level of barcodes we have done implementation. I'm not sure exactly about the GS1, so I will not go into do that. But definitely, I will have my team to publish that on the Udo experience. And then maybe if Anand can leave the email address, we are happy to answer. Or if not, then one on one communication. But barcode integration is possible for sure. GS1, I'm not sure 100%. It should be possible, but I will not. 100% comment on that. Excellent. Unfortunately, we are out of time for this session. I'd like to again thank our our guest, Chintan Shah. Mohammed, thank you from Gafco here sharing their experience moving from a legacy system to Odoo. Also, if you have any further questions, please feel free to visit BrainWire's virtual booth. Thanks again for being with us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank, thank you, Yoshi. Thanks, thanks. everyone.